For years, people have been flying around the globe, scouring the ocean floor, and pouring money into the hunt for the lost city of Atlantis. However, is it possible that it has already been there in front of us? One of the least likely locations on Earth. Midway through the Sahara Desert. Or a location that has not yet been found. Or is it merely a made-up location used in morality stories? Watch this video and make your own judgment. But first, thanks for watching this video, you could really help me out as a content creator just by pressing the like button and subscribe to my channel. Now let's begin with the lost ancient city of Atlantis finally have been found. 1. What is the Eye of the Sahara? The mysterious Rakat structure, also referred to as the Eye of the Sahara, is located close to west-central Mauritania in Africa. It is situated on the Adra Plateau of the Sahara. From space, it appears to be a nearly symmetrical geologic structure made up of numerous concentric circles of exposed sedimentary rock. In actuality, that is how we initially came across it. The Eye of the Sahara was discovered by Project Gemini astronauts in the 1960s while they were looking for circular impact structures. It was initially believed to have been brought about by an extraterrestrial impact, but after more thought, it was determined to have been made entirely planet-side. Now, it serves as a landmark for astronauts and a fascinating feature for Google Earth users. However, some people believe it to be something more. Could that belief be true in some way? 2. What is the Lost City of Atlantis? The mythical island known as the Lost City of Atlantis is said to have submerged beneath the sea a very long time ago, taking with it the most developed civilization ever. Timaeus and Critias, two works by Plato written around 360 BC, contain the first mention of it. Atlantis, according to him, was bigger than Libya and Asia put together, which referred to modern-day northern Africa and over half of Turkey. According to Plato, the island was ruled by a group of powerful kings who had control over the entire island as well as many other islands and areas of the continent. The city was divided into rings of land and water that alternated, with bridges connecting the two that were guarded by gates. But the Greek gods are where the Atlantis legend first began. In particular, Poseidon. While traveling the globe in search of the largest island, Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses, discovered Atlantis. The most attractive and wisest people on earth were said to have lived there. Plato, his true love, was discovered here. He decided to do what any sensible person would do, he built a palace into a mountain, surrounded it with three circular moats, each increasing in width, separated by large rings of land, and placed Plato in it to dwell for an undetermined period of time. This way, he could claim Plato as his own and not worry about other people falling in love with her. Poseidon frequently had affairs, defiled women, and posed as other gods to get what he wanted, so this is not unusual for him. In essence, he was awful. Plato gave birth to five sets of twin boys while being held by Poseidon. The first of whom, Atlas, rose to power in Atlantis and was given credit for naming the ocean, hence the name Atlantic Ocean. The nine neighboring kingdoms, known as the Kingdoms of Atlantis, were ruled by the other sons as well. It was claimed that the island was self-sufficient, raising its own livestock and crops and maintaining a well-maintained irrigation system. According to rumors, Atlantis inhabitants came from space and arrived on the island 50,000 years ago from the Lyrian star system. They could live for an average of 800 years and were all taller and fairer than modern humans. They were thought to possess supernatural abilities, such as the capacity to alter volcanic eruptions and weather. This might also be related to the idea that everyone living there was a mix of God and human. People frequently referred to Atlantis as a utopia. But archaeology professor Ken Fedda claimed the opposite was true. He said, Atlantis is the embodiment of a materially wealthy, technologically advanced, and militarily powerful nation that has become corrupted by its wealth, sophistication, and might. This is a major reason why many people think Plato made up the story of Atlantis to serve as a moral alibi rather than being anything real. 3. Evidence that it is Atlantis. Large white spots can be seen on aerial photographs of the eye. These are actually salt deposits on the sand surface. This shows that within the last 12,000 years, ocean water flowed over this region. 12,000 is not a random number. The Sahara Desert once had a lush, green climate, according to numerous recent articles. Everything was destroyed in a massive flood about 11,600 years ago, leaving behind a desolate wasteland. By about 56 million years, that puts an end to the notion that that portion of Africa was underwater. At that time, the Trans-Saharan Seaway had submerged parts of Africa. 
So, before you say that it can't be Atlantis because it's not underwater, start rethinking. Despite being currently landlocked, the eye hasn't always been that way. 4. Declassified CIA files. Some CIA documents that had previously been classified have recently been made public. Although some redactions remained that were classified, they added new details about the Eye of the Sahara. Aircraft were covertly sent to about a dozen different places around the world in 1967 as part of a secret CIA mission to conduct surveillance and look for geomagnetic anomalies. Since the Earth's geomagnetic fields protect us from the void of space, researchers looked for any anomalies or unusual phenomena. One of the test sites was the Rakat structure. The mission's existence is now declassified, but the mission's findings were kept secret. Regarding the discoveries made by the Eye of the Sahara, the following was written. Nothing. The declassified information ends there. There is only a small amount of information that has been redacted that the government felt was still classified more than 50 years after the mission. Why the results would still be classified is unclear. The CIA believes that something strange is happening at the Eye of the Sahara and that it should be kept secret from the general public, but this isn't necessarily proof of the lost city of Atlantis. There were supposedly two freshwater springs on the central island of Atlantis, one of which was hot and the other cold. Given that there are no other known locations in the world with springs like these, this would be very unusual. This kind of thing might have served as the initial impetus for the mission. However, we don't currently have a solution. The book Adam and Eve was another item taken from the declassified records. The reasons for this book's inclusion in the CIA files are still unknown, but the entire book is now available. There are claims made in the book that 11,600 years ago, the ocean had covered the entire Earth. That number is there once more. This number corresponds to the time when the Sahara changed from a lush, green region to a dry, arid desert. Additionally, it coincides with Atlantis sinking. Additionally, it falls within the Younger Dryas era. A well-known instance of abrupt change on Earth is the Younger Dryas. It began when Earth's climate changed from a cold, glacial state to a warmer one around 14,500 years ago. It is estimated that the end occurred 11,500 years ago. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says that the end was particularly abrupt. This might be what made the lost city of Atlantis vanish entirely rather than just sunk beneath the waves. 5. Words lost in translation. If the eye of the Sahara is not an island but rather a landmass, how could it be Atlantis? People have a tendency to interpret ancient words literally when they are used. They fail to take into account how words can be interpreted differently over time. Take a look at the Declaration of Independence, which was drafted a few centuries ago but contains language that is unquestionably archaic. Imagine reading documents from the BC era and presuming that nothing would have changed by the time you read them. There is the additional difficulty of translation in the case of Plato's writings as well. Translation errors and lost words will result from translating ancient Greek into contemporary English. This may apply to the word island. The Greek word nisos was used in Plato's writings. The word island was used in the translation. However, according to joining the dots, Plato's Atlantis in the central Mediterranean, the word nisos can refer to a wide range of concepts, including peninsula, for which there wasn't a specific Greek word until later, coast, or piece of land inside a continent that is surrounded by lakes, rivers, or springs. Therefore, Plato might not have been referring to an island at all. He might have been referring to the Eye of the Sahara. Although all of Plato's previous allegories and tales were explicitly referred to as fiction, there is also the claim that he wrote this as a moral tale. He repeatedly stated in his writing that this was a true story. And if an amateur archaeologist could find the legendary city of Troy using Homer's The Iliad, why couldn't Plato's works be used to find the city of Atlantis? 5. Evidence it is not Atlantis. The Location Plato noted that the city of Atlantis was west of the Pillars of Hercules and that this is where it was located. It would then be situated between Spain and Morocco in the Strait of Gibraltar. Well, the Eye of the Sahara is not there. It is, however, the location of the island city of Gades, currently Cades. One of the ten kingdoms of Atlantis may have been named after one of Poseidon's sons. That may be the case, but why would Plato choose to write about a kingdom's location rather than the Atlantean capital? Volcanic activity. Geologically speaking, the Eye of the Sahara is an odd formation. Therefore, it makes sense that there is much debate about how it came to be. Tot higher in Picti. 
However, it is generally acknowledged to be a severely eroded geologic dome. According to one theory, the waters of the Atlantic Ocean flowed in the area when the supercontinent of Panayaya split apart. A circular rocky dome surrounded by sandstone layers was created at the same time by magma that rose up from the Earth's mantle. The sandstone suffered from erosion over the ensuing millions of years, and as the dome sank, circular ridges were left behind. It's like taking a slice off the top of the dome and leaving behind a perfect circle. The rings developed as various kinds of rocks within the dome eroded at various rates. Another possibility is that the entire region surrounding the eye was lifted by subsurface volcanic activity. Back then, it was greener and more temperate, with plenty of flowing water and life. Sandstone rocks that have layers formed when they were deposited by flowing rivers and lakes as well as by blowing winds. Sandstone and other types of rocks were eventually pushed up by volcanic flow, but after the area's volcanic activity subsided, wind and water erosion ate away at the layers, causing the area to settle down and collapse on itself, forming the distinctive eye shape. One final hypothesis is that the lithosphere, crust and upper mantle, around the eye was weak, and the magma rose up from below to form an anticline. Basically, this is a large fold of rock that protrudes above its surroundings. The sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rock layers were alternated. The concentric circles were produced as a result of the different rates of erosion of these rocks. Additionally, the eye of the Sahara's oldest rocks are in its center, which is consistent with how anticlines develop. Consequently, this is a very plausible theory. What do you think now that you've seen factual evidence for both sides? Do you think the Atlantean lost city may be located in the eye of the Sahara? Or is it just too absurd? Let me know it in the comments. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye.